Welcome to Staying Connected, a podcast where I talk to people about their stories with VEDS, Marfan, Lois Dietz, and related vascular and aortic connective tissue conditions. The views, information, and opinions in this podcast are those of the individuals involved, and the information presented does not constitute medical or other professional advice or services. Hey everyone, today we're going to hear from Kevin Craker, who is joining to share his story with Lois Dietz syndrome. Kevin is now in his 50s and was just diagnosed a few years ago after a spontaneous coronary artery dissection or SCAD. If you like this show and want to help our communities raise awareness of these conditions, consider joining my Patreon. This show wouldn't be possible without the support of my subscribers there, so if you're already supporting the show, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get into the show. Hey, Kevin, thank you so much for joining the show to talk about your story with Lois Deed syndrome. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to anybody that doesn't know you yet? Oh, yes. So I'm Kevin Craker. I was diagnosed uh, with Lois Deeds in 2018. I live uh, with uh, my wife in Victoria. And the uh, story kind of starts in 2017. It was late August. And all of a sudden, I uh, uh, started having a heart attack. And that was totally out of the, out of the blue because there was really no kind of warning signs or anything like that. And well, that evening I had to do one of the hardest things uh, that I've ever had to do in my life. And that was to ask, ask my wife, Jenna, if uh, she could call 911 because I was having a heart attack. And I honestly never want to have to do that ever again. Uh, we uh, lived in a, an apartment building, and it's one thing to hear the first responders coming where it's like a fire truck, and they're coming because the fire alarm's going off. Uh, it's, a, it's a totally different kind of experience when you can hear the ambulance coming, and you know what's coming for you. Yeah. Uh, that was a totally different uh, uh, kind of experience. How old were you when this happened? Uh, I was 40, almost 48. Almost 48. Yeah. And prior to this, your medical history was pretty benign? Um, it wasn't benign, uh, but I'll, I'm going to get into that in a little bit here where I uh, were. Uh, I'm kind of where I think it'll fit in. Okay. Uh, but I, I did have uh, some other, other issues. Uh, but I'll, because uh, what I'll start with is how I was uh, diagnosed with Lois Dietz in the first place. Because after I, after I had a heart attack and I was in the ER, the cardiologist told me the next morning that. I had something called uh, SCAD, which was a spontaneous coronary artery dissection. And uh, the reason I all of a sudden had a heart attack the night before was uh, one of my coronary arteries all of a sudden decided to tear, causing the heart attack. And then I was referred to a geneticist, uh, well, a Dr. Steinrath's, and we met with her and kind of uh, relayed part of my medical history, part of also, also what had happened to my brother about two and a half uh, years earlier when he had died during an, an operation to repair, uh, further repair uh, his aorta. And uh, he, uh, he was during the operation, he was declared uh, a brain uh, dead off, uh, after it. Uh, there were some complications. Uh, when he had the uh, that operation, he didn't know that uh, he had any anything like that. 
uh, uh, my geneticist when she heard that uh, she was uh, she was almost certain that he had a low risk disease, which is what I ended up ha uh, having. And also, also, as we were talking with our geneticist, I kind of got the impression that even though I was going to uh, get genetic testing done, uh, it was kind of the way that she off, often would kind of look at me. I kind of got the impression that she already, already kind of knew that I probably had Lois Leeds. Uh, there was enough features, kind of like the you know, almond-shaped eyes and, and other, other kind of features. Then I, after I got the, uh, the blood uh, test done, that came back as being positive for the Lois Dietz syndrome. And that pretty much if, and then uh, there's a, uh, the type that I had, at least the cardiovascular kind of version of it, there's a number of different types. That, but I, I pretty much have the cardiovascular one. So it's not just the aorta, it's smaller vessels all throughout the body. And uh, that's where I'll go into what you were asking earlier, if I had had any other kind of things happen. Because the Lois Deeds diagnosis explained a lot of other previous things that had happened. Uh, I'd had two hernias when I was younger. The one was when I was eight or nine when I was in grade three. And the other one was, I'm not exactly sh sure how old, old I was, but my mom basically said I was, I was a baby. So it's kind of odd for a baby to get a, a hernia like that. It doesn't seem like, uh, like a nor normal <laughs> thing to me, but. Yeah, for sure. Um, but it also helped explain uh, that around 20 so years ago, I ended up having, I was working at the Calgary Zoo at the time in the summer. And I was, I was getting things kind of sorted out, out for when I was gonna start the nursing program. And I was, I was taking one of the uh, CPR classes. And I was, I was totally fine when I was doing that. And then when I came back to my apartment, it was the weirdest thing that I, I can still remember vividly. I put my hand on the doorknob to open the door and I got an instant headache. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd. Like I'm, I'm used to getting headaches often, but I never had one where one second I, I didn't have a headache, the next second it, it was like a bad headache. Mm -hmm. And that carried on for over a week, nonstop. I could never, I could take Tylenol all day long and it, it wouldn't do anything. And then after, after I'd had that going on, like I wasn't that great. And then there was, my brother came to check on me and I wasn't doing well at all. And he, uh, he took me to the ER at the Rocket View in Calgary. And uh, my doctor, uh, he scheduled an MRI. And when he was uh, looking at the results of, of that, one of the neurologists in the hospital happened to be with him at the same time. And, and he looked at my results and, and, and then all of a sudden, in the span of about a couple of hours after that, I was being transported to the ICU at the Foothills Hospital, and he basically told me there that the uh, the reason for my headaches was that one of my carotid arteries feeding blood to my brain was 90% blocked. Mm -hmm. And 
The reason for the headaches was one of my kind of smaller blood vessels directly behind my, my eyes was trying to compensate as well as it could but because it was it was behind the eyes uh it was putting pressure on that eye which was causing the uh, headaches that, that went on on for that whole week uh, so then i ended up in this uh the stroke rehab uh, unit for about i think about four or five days or so and you were how old i would have been at that point i would have been in my early 30s, maybe like 32 or so. And at that time, did they have any kind of suspicion of why you had had that happen to you? Well... Did they look into that? Uh, they, after I was discharged, they had, someone was looking into, uh, to, uh, see if it was more fans, because that was the only, only thing on their uh, radar at that time because Lois Dietz wasn't discovered until like 2005 and this was about three uh, years or so before that the results of that was negative so I was basically in the dark at that point I didn't exactly know what was actually going on the only only thing was from that point on, I've been taking you know, a low dose aspirin every day since then. But then that wasn't until all this other stuff happened over 20 years later that I, I finally figured out because it explained all of, all of those issues because it was uh, smaller vessels. Uh, so then I've been getting uh, like MRIs once a, a year pretty much and that pretty much scans all uh, my whole aorta from the top all the way down and uh, I'll make sure how that things are aren't kind of progressing and then I also have a uh, scan done on my head as well because I have I have like a tiny little uh, like aneurysm in there and they're keeping track of that, of that too. So, yeah, I'd love to know what you were told about Lowy Steed syndrome when you were given that diagnosis a few years ago, and what it felt like for you. Um, I was told that I uh, shouldn't lift more than like twenty five pounds, uh, which pretty much because I had. Uh, right before that, like the, uh, the, uh, the morning before I had the heart attack was I was working at, as a care aide at a nursing home. And that was basically the last time I worked as a care aide be, uh, because of the, the weight uh, um, issues, because of the physical demands of doing that kind of a job. I was, I was no longer able to do that anymore. So it was... A bit of a of a shock at first, and and not kind of knowing uh, how things would go after that. So it, the next uh, five or six years were a bit of uh, a journey of discovery, of of, lear of learning as much as we could about Lois Deets and getting support from uh, pe uh, people and. You know, a couple of years ago, there was a, like in the middle of the pandemic, there was a virtual walk, walk thing that was done through, through the Markman Foundation in the, on the States. And I was, I was made the team leader for the Lowers Deeds group. And so that was kind of neat. And there was all kinds of support from that like I was basically told if you if you ever need any anything like we're here for you and that was uh, that was like a, a huge kind of thing for me and I was also able to um, email Dr. Gates 
with certain things if I uh, needed to. Like I didn't uh, uh, make it uh, like any, uh, a very complicated kind of thing. I just uh, just uh, very, and he was always uh, very generous with his time and stuff. And I never had someone like that who was so knowledgeable and and uh, someone who was that high up who had discovered lower dates i never expected that i would be able to email him and he would actually write me back like that was a huge kind of thing for me like yeah that's wonderful and hal i've met hal too and he's fantastic yeah i'm so glad you got that support yeah so uh yeah that's been a, a big a big a part of of um getting through all of this the past uh, years plus i i've also also had a great cardiologist dr franco over in victoria here and getting all the um all the mri uh, scans arranged because in canada it's that's a whole different system than in the states like you you have to you need uh, like to have um, an actual kind of diagnosis so that you can justify having all of these yearly kind of MRIs uh, so that at uh, one site after it was confirmed that I had low deeds then it was it was easier to do that because because he had the proof that uh, that uh, he has this and he needs to have his yard uh, checked like once a year. And so, yeah, that was. Oh, that's great. I know that since your diagnosis, too, you've had kind of like this extensive family history of Louis Steed's uncovered. Is that. Oh, is that oh, fair to say? Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Like, uh, like it's. Because I, because my geneticist, she was certain that uh, my brother who died had it. She was also quite assured also that my dad also would have had it, even though he's never had any kind of symptoms or signs of it early on that were, that would have been uh, noticeable, like with the out of the vessels and stuff. But then he had, all of his life, I think he's uh, had a, a low heart rate and a, a, low breath, a low blood pressure. So that uh, pretty much would have mimicked someone taking like a beta blocker. You would basically do the same, same thing. I'm convinced uh, one other brother for certain, I'm sure uh, that he has it as well and then other other members of his family i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty sure also and then also also extended extended family going into some aunts aunts and uncles there's at least one one aunt and one uncle and there's at least Two cousins from the the one family, where I like it's confer it's confirmed with the same kind of of genetic testing that I had done, and the exact same result. So I like it's you know, totally confirmed. And then one other cousin on the on a different family is also con- also confirmed there too. Uh, so there's out of a family of of like 11 or 12 kids at at least at least three of them including my dad would have had it Uh, plus i there was other other aunts who who had apparently had other kinds of of like heart heart issues that uh, may have also been part of it too maybe i don't I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. 
But this diagnosis then really helped to kind of bring some answers to the family. It seems yeah, oh, like. oh, yes. Yes. And there was also one other thing I just wanted to clarify. Like uh, uh, there's often a misconception that Lowy's, uh, Lowy's Deeps in, and Marfan's only affects taller people, which, uh, which isn't always the case. There are some people who have Marfan's who are, are shorter and also also the same thing applies with Lois Dietz oh, because my one cousin who is confirmed is is a, a lot shorter than I am and still and still has Lois Dietz so oh, like if you're if you're a, a, a shorter person don't I don't just assume that uh, that's not possible that you uh, have lowest deeds. Because especially if it's something that's within your family al- already and and you happen to be shorter and, and one of your siblings has it and they're tall, don't I don't I'll make the mistake of thinking that that's not possible. I get the genetic testing done. Yeah. That's such a great reminder, too, in general, that for Lois Dietz and for Marfan and for Veds, too, like there are signs and symptoms that they say could point to it, mm-hmm. but not everybody has every single feature. Some people don't have hardly any outward features at all, and it's not like this uniform. Everybody with Marfan looks the same. Everybody with Lois Dietz looks the same everybody with beds looks the same. Like there's a lot of variation in our communities. And it's such a great reminder to get tested if you're, if you have it in the family yeah. or, are, or have a medical history that's potentially concerning for it. Yeah. 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 What is it like? I know you're in your fifties now. What is it like being in your fifties with Lois Dietz? Well, I kind of view it, view it like where the knowledge is power, where the more you know about it, and the, and the, and the more you are able to get support through like, on like either Facebook groups or whatever happens to be out, out there. That has made it a lot, a lot easier. Just knowing uh knowing what to expect n- knowing that that i'm getting the necessary scans done oh like i'm a, a huge uh, star trek fan so i kind of consider them like those tricorder that kind of scan that they do on star trek i i kind of think of it that way uh, that i'm uh, being kind of scanned like that because i know uh, some people get claustrophobic in in the mris i just try to kind of visualize myself being somewhere else and so it's not really a big deal for me but but yeah it's unknowing and that also also having the support of my wife has been absolutely absolutely fantastic that's wonderful um very interested in your experience with Lois Dietz and like the medical system or any medical providers or anything like that or lack of knowledge like have you encountered any lack of knowledge about Lois Dietz or is there anything that you'd want medical professionals to know based on your experiences anything like that that has come up since your diagnosis I've been really fortunate Dr. Franco was He's been fantastic as a cardiologist. I do think, I think I was the uh, first patient he ever had who had lowest teeth. So, uh, so I think he, he himself was probably a bit on, on a, on a learning curve himself, which he has done well. I would, uh, what I would let's say to other medical professionals, if, if you're not knowledgeable 
about Laurie's deeds and you and you have someone uh, who comes across your way and you, um, two websites now that I would highly recommend uh, would be the loweriesdeeds.org site in the States and the loweriesdeedscanada.org site in Canada because I was looking at the Canadian one last night and there is a huge amount of information that uh, you can access on the on the menu part of the Canadian website there's a clinicians thing and it gives you links to so many different things that uh, you can access information on like it like it gives you the uh, the current guidelines for when you need to intervene surgically with the aorta or or there's like a, a head to toe kind of thing that uh, shows you all of the different things that can go on in someone's body it gives you so many different things that you could learn more about lowest deeds so you can properly treat the, the patient and and the um the american site is has pretty much the uh, the same kind of of information on it it's or, organized a little bit differently but it's pretty much provides the same amount of information and uh, the best part of the american one is is that how deeds is is all over the place I'll put a link to those in the episode show notes too. Okay. So if you're listening to this right now and you're like, I didn't catch those URLs, uh, check out the episode show notes and I, I will put them in there for sure. Another question for you I have is if somebody's listening to the show and listening to you share your experience with Lois Dietz and they either think that they have Lois Dietz or were just diagnosed with it and trying to kind of navigate those first few years of getting through that diagnosis period, what kind of advice would you give somebody? I, I would, I would say, you know, uh, some people might uh, think of this as a, of a cliche, but I think it's, I think it would be important to take it like one day at a time, like, like try not to get overwhelmed by it. And, like I said earlier, um, knowledge is power, and 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 the more and the more you know about it, I think the less freaky it becomes. And just talk to other people that uh, you know, and there's numerous support kind of groups that you can join where. Where like everyone in the group has Lois, uh, Lois Dietz or more fans or Reds, and you can share your stories with them and get their uh, their support, and that and that can you know make a uh, make a huge difference. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I would do. You know. That's great advice, and I'll put a link to those support groups or at least the websites where you can find those support groups and the episode show notes as well. I am so glad you mentioned them. Like I 100% stand behind everything you said and the value of talking to somebody else with a condition that you have or something like it, I think can really, really help when you're really going through it, Mm -hmm. especially at first. I mean, you read all this crazy stuff on the internet and then you know, there's a different picture than when you talk to a person. And I think it's so important to get that perspective. Yeah, yeah. And build those relationships. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your experience with Louis Seeds. It's been a pleasure, Katie. And I also wanted to mention uh, that my wife is a, a huge fan of your show and a regular listener. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. What was her name? Her name's Dana. 
Hi, Jenna. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode featuring Kevin Craker sharing his story with Lowy Steed Syndrome. I've put a link in the show notes for the websites Kevin mentioned in the interview. If you're ready to meet others, get involved, or need support, there are more links for you there too. It's spring and there are several events coming up soon in different areas across the country, so be sure to check it out. There's also a link in the episode show notes for the VEDS Collaborative Natural History Study, a research study led by Dr. Shireen Shalhoub, open to people with VEDS, Marfan, Lowy Steets, and similar connective tissue conditions. If you like this show, be sure to share it on social media or give it a rating or review. You can also support the production of this podcast by joining my Patreon. As always, my top tier patrons are listed in the episode show notes. Next week, we'll talk to Ro Nania, who has family members with VEDS and lost her brother Angelo to it as well. See you soon. <laughs>